I do want to remind us that we are just about a week away from celebrating our fifth pastoral anniversary. We would love to have you come and celebrate with us. Um, starting on next Friday, um, we will have the um, the opening uh, opening aspect of that celebration. We're going to have Bishop Eric J. Freeman uh, come and share with us that evening. And then we're also going to have on Sunday, uh, my dear brother, Elder Aaron Bernard Hayes, come and share with us that Sunday. So uh, I invite you uh, to come and join us. If you can't come on Sunday, because of course you are, um, you're a member of another church, that's that's absolutely right. <laughs> but we would love to have you come and come and fellowship with us on Friday. Um, just simply seeing you uh, would matter more to me than anything else uh, to simply see you because um, this has been a wonderful five years. We thank the Lord for it. And we thank God for the opportunity to serve his people in this capacity. Now, uh, let's go ahead and get into our devotional for this morning. Um, first thing first, we're actually in a series titled The Creation Story. If you've been following with us on Sunday mornings, um, this is a series that we began on the first Sunday where it is a model for kingdom creatives. I'm not sure if you know it, but you were created by the creator and you were made in his image according to his likeness. So that means that you were created to be a creative. It's our responsibility to produce in this world the original idea of God. As citizens of the kingdom of God, it is our responsibility to produce the original idea of God, uh, to, uh, to simply carry out what he intended for us to be in this earth. And so I'm excited because I believe that this series is positioning us to thrive. It's positioning us uh, to walk in the identity that God has called us to. Now, one particular uh, uh, thing that we saw in the creation story is that God, after he created the heavens and the earth, he shaped that world with his words. Yeah, the Bible says, and God said, and then shortly thereafter, and God saw. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. In other words, whatever God says, you will certainly see that thing. And in fact, this work, uh, this week, uh, we are talking about how to see what God said, how to see what God said. Somebody put in a comment section, I want to see what God said. Yeah, Say that aloud. Put that in your heart. I want to see what God said. Let's look at the text that we've been reflecting from. That's Habakkuk chapter two, verses one and two. Out of the New King James Version, it says, And I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision. In other words, write what I've said. That what you see is what I've said. Write it and make it plain on tablets. Why? That he may run who reads it. That he may run who reads it. This morning, what I want to focus on is the fact that um, whatever the Lord has revealed to you in his word, we said yesterday that we must store it in our hearts, that we must write it on the tablets of our hearts. And, and why is that? Because if it's written on my heart, it's going to flow through my life. In other words, it wasn't simply hidden for me to hide it, but it was hidden so that it would shine through my life, so that it would be reflected through the way that I live. And the truth is, when that happens, somebody is going to see what's on the inside of you. One thing I realize is that people are pretty good at reading us. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, you ever people watched before? You ever looked around at people, just sat down watching them, paying attention? Yeah. If you do it, that's great. You know, I, I tend to do that. Me and First Lady like the people watch as well. But what you may not realize is that somebody is also watching you. Somebody is paying attention to how you walk, to how you talk, to how you engage others, how you perform your job. 
how you show up on time, how you are, how you treat your customers, how you do your work when nobody else is watching. Somebody is paying attention to you and what they're doing is they're reading you. In fact, what we discover is that there are people who may not have ever read the word of God, but when they see you, they will see him if his word has been written on your heart. I want to encourage you this morning that the fourth, the fourth key, the fourth principle to seeing what God said is to show or to share, rather, the word of God. We said on Monday to seek the word, to submit to the word, to, show, uh, to store the word. And today I'm encouraging you to share the word, to share the word. I was inspired by this because um, there's someone that I was talking with and they actually surprised me um, just the other day because um, as you know, we are we are fasting as a as a community. And there are others that have joined this community, uh, some that is visible to you, some that you wouldn't even recognize um, have joined on. Um, you wouldn't even know. And it's been absolutely wonderful. I thank God for it. Um, but there are some people who have seen me and they in interact with me. And before I ever was able to communicate that, that I had the responsibility that I have, they had already recognized things about me. They were already reading me. And then once they learned about who I am and my responsibilities, um, eventually they became a part of our prayer community. Well, uh, next thing you know, I'm so excited because I'm seeing transformation in the lives of those that have become a part of it. But then here's the kicker. I looked up and, and I realized that as we began our 10 days of consecration, shout out to those of you that are with us in our 10 days of consecration. Um, one of the people that I've been in, in, in communication with told me that they're participating in the 10 days of consecration. That is absolutely amazing. But how did that come about? It isn't that they were, it isn't anything that I did specifically, but it's the fact that they read what was on my heart. They saw it in the way that I lived. They saw it in the way that I handled things. You see, brothers and sisters, the thing is, uh, in the Bible, what we saw is the Lord said to make it plain on tablets. Why? He said that he may run who reads it. What we desire, brothers and sisters, is that when people read what God has placed in us, that they'll run with it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We desire that people would run with the word. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is why it's so important to make sure that it's the word that's in your heart, that it's the word that you're carrying, that it's the word that you're living because if you would if you would carry God's word in your heart, you'll start to see it in others' lives. Come on now. Yeah. If you're as a father, you'll start to see it in your child. As a husband, you'll start to see it in your wife. Yeah. As an as a business owner, you'll see it in your customers, in your employees. Come on. I want you to know that if you would carry God's word in your heart, somebody's reading you and they'll take it and they'll run with it. Brothers and sisters, we want to see what God said and whatever he's given us through his word. We've got to make sure that it's in our hearts because somebody is reading your life. They're reading you. And I pray that they would catch it, that they'll read it and they'll run with it and they'll go and tell somebody else. Let's pray today that we would share God's word. Am, am, are you saying, Brother Brooks, that, that I need to go and tell everybody about Jesus? It's important that you do that. But it's, more, it's most important that you live it. The worst thing you could do is that you tell somebody something that doesn't match what your lifestyle says. That you communicate a truth that doesn't align with your life. People can read. And they'll say, those words don't match. That what you're saying doesn't match what I see. 
Can you see the challenge in that? They can't run with that. But when you live that which the word says, and it's reflecting in your life, they'll read it and they'll run with it. And when they run with that, you best believe it'll change their lives. Let's pray. Father, we honor you and we magnify you today because, Lord, you're good and your mercy is everlasting. Your truth endures through every generation. And, Father, we're grateful. Lord, I ask you to forgive us of our sin. Lord, purge us with hyssop. Make us white as snow. Purify us, Lord. And I'm so grateful that you're faithful and just to do that very thing. Father, today, we as your people desire to share your word through the ways that we live. Father, I pray that your word would permeate every aspect of our character, that you would transform us so that when people see us, that they would see you. There's somebody reading my brother. There's somebody that's been reading my sister. And before they had an opportunity to say anything, Father, you already spoke. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. You already spoke to the person that was riding, riding that bus with them. You already spoke to the person that's a part of their team. You already spoke to their manager. You already spoke to their to their uh, to their constituents. You already spoke. You spoke through the way that they lived. You spoke through my sister's life. You've spoken through my brother's life. You've spoken through that student's life. Lord, keep speaking. Lord, keep sharing. Lord, keep revealing who you are through the way that we live. Here we are. We're available to you. And we want to see what you said, Father, through our lives and the lives of those that surround us. Lord, as we close out this prayer, we pray as your son taught us. And we say, our Father who is in heaven, holy is your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. And Lord, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. And all of God's children say, Amen. Well, God bless you. My name is Enrique Brooks. I'm honored to be the senior pastor of Thrive Church and host of the Prayer 365 podcast. Where we're on a mission to transform lives through the lifestyle of prayer. I want to encourage you to take 60 seconds to reflect on today's devotional. And remember that whatever God has shown you, that if you've stored it in your heart, somebody else is going to read it and they're going to run with it. Make sure that they're running with something that's worthy of running off with. God bless you. I love you. And I'll see you tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. Take care.